On today's episode, it's Lightroom Quick and Easy Edits, working with linear and radial gradients. Stay tuned. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Joy of Editing with Dave Kelly. I hope everyone is doing great, and thank you so much for joining me today. Today, I wanted to show you the power of linear and radial gradients for editing your images very quick and very easily without getting into really complicated local adjustments. I'll explain what I mean about that in a minute, but first off, I have this image that I shot recently. It's springtime here in Pennsylvania, and this is a trout lily. I actually shot this on my iPhone. This is a RAW file. And basically all I'm going to do here is hit the auto button and do an auto adjustment here. And it looks pretty good. The other thing I always do is in lens corrections is enable remove chromatic aberrations and enable profile corrections. So that's already done. I just have a little bit of sharpening here and a slight amount of noise reduction. This was shot at a very low ISO, ISO 25. It's not noisy at all. And then the only other thing I did was, I'm going to open up the crop tool and show you, I just did a uh, custom crop on it. I'll just go ahead and click done. And next I'll show you how we can quickly and easily edit this with linear and radial gradients. But I just wanted to mention, I usually start out in Lightroom and then I'll move into Photoshop and I'll use things like the TK plugin for Photoshop to really fine tune my images and bring them out just the way I want. But there are other times when I have an image just like this one where I don't really feel the need to go into Photoshop. Like I can take care of everything right here in Lightroom very quickly and very easily and that is what the uh, linear gradient and the radial gradient is all about especially the radial gradient as you'll see here in a minute and as i said i've already applied some basic adjustments and i basically just use the auto setting here sometimes i'll tweak things up but i think this image looks good just the way it is so let me go ahead and open up our local adjustment tools and you'll find them right here this icon, the circle with the dash lines around it, we'll just click on that. And inside here, we'll find things like select subject, select sky, very powerful tools, the brush tool. But here's what we're looking at today, linear gradient and radial gradient, very simple and easy to use tools. And then we have really complicated things like color range, luminance range, and there's even depth range. If you have like uh, certain iPhone images that have a depth map, you can use that as well. I may do another video on that at some point. If I'm gonna use tools like color range and luminance range, I usually save that kind of stuff for Photoshop and the TK8 plugin for Photoshop, but I just want to keep it simple and basic right here in Lightroom. So let's go ahead and look at these two tools, Linear Gradient and Radial Gradient. My editing philosophy is just to start to look at my image and think, what kind of problems do I have here and what can I do to correct those problems? Now, the first thing I'm seeing is right here at the top. This is kind of light up in here, and I don't really need it to be that light so I can darken it down. So I'll think, well, what kind of a local adjustment can I use for that? And in this case, I think it's a linear gradient. So let me go ahead and click on linear gradient. And you'll notice I have this little uh, cross that I could place anywhere on the image that I want. And I'll just left click with my mouse and I'll drag down. And you can see there's that gradient, okay? And now if I hover over this black dot, you'll see that red overlay. That's the area that will be getting any adjustment that I make over on these adjustments here. So I'm hovering over that and you can see it. Now, if you want to see that all the time, because right now, if I drag off of the black dot, that goes away. But if I click on show overlay, that'll come back up and it'll just stay there. And I also want to note, if you click on the red square, you're going to open up this uh, overlay mode. And see this picker tool? You can choose any color that you want that overlay to be. So whichever color you prefer, if you don't like the red, change it. You also get some custom colors here that you can pick. And then you can even adjust the opacity of, of how strong that is. You see that? You could take it the whole way up or whatever you want. So whatever you like, you can set it to. And then you also have overlay shows. Right now it's showing the affected area. In other words, the area that the adjustment will be applied to. And then if you click the drop down, you can change it to unaffected areas. So whichever way you prefer. And then to close that out after you set it up the way you like, just click on the X and that'll close that up. And remember this red area, this is the area that will take the adjustment. 
By the way, see this circle right here? You can flip that around, say like if you wanted to affect the bottom half of the image or the bottom three quarters, you could, now that would be getting the adjustment. But that's not what I want, so I'm gonna turn it back around. And then what I wanna do is, you could take the black square here and you can drag this up, okay, and change the angle. I'm gonna mimic the angle of this log right here. And I think that graduation zone is a little too much. I don't want it getting into the flower here. So I'm going to take this circle right here, this white circle, and drag this up and reduce that graduation area to right around there. And then I may readjust this just a little wee bit, maybe right like that. I think that's going to be good. Now, you could shut this show overlay off if you want to or leave it on. If I leave it on and I come over here and start to make an adjustment, like adjust the exposure, I'll drag this to the left, and then that red overlay goes away. But then it'll come back again. But if you don't want to see it again, you can just shut this off, which I think makes sense. But then we can adjust this, uh, you know, just take that exposure down a little bit. Um, maybe take the clarity and drag it to the left just to kind of simulate like it like it's out of focus a little bit maybe something like right around in there and even the texture i might even do a little negative texture just to take the emphasis off of that portion of the image and i think i like that i think that's going to be good so that darkens that up a little bit but that's very easy and pretty much now we're going to start looking at the radio gradient because to me the real power in a simple edit the radio gradient it's really good for just picking certain parts of the image out what i want to do is show you something that'll be helpful for you know help you understand these tools and that is if we look over here to our adjustments these are the adjustments for this linear gradient right now if i click add here and say add a radio gradient and let me just draw a radio gradient here you notice how everything is dark in here that's because it's inside of this mask one and we may not want to use those exact same adjustments in fact i don't so we don't want to do that so we can go ahead and get rid of the radio gradient by clicking the three dots here and we'll just come and click on delete radio gradient one and that'll go away now what we're going to do is come up and see where it says create new mask click the plus and let's choose a radio gradient and now I could come here and let's say I want to darken these uh, leaves down here. So I'm going to click and drag a radial gradient out here. Now you see the circle right here. I can adjust the angle of it. I can come to the center circle and move it down. And you notice when I hover over it, we see that uh, red overlay again. And this is the graduated area, you know, from here up to here. It's going to get the full effect inside here. And then we can come here and make it, you know, wider. And then we can adjust the uh, graduated area by coming to the red dot here and pulling in. See, we can make that area. This is the area that will get all the adjustment in here and it'll graduate out. So we can change that graduation zone by clicking and dragging on this red dot. And again, we can adjust the angle here. And I'm going to start out with that. I may make it just a little bit bigger. And I can even go off canvas here, you see, and make that even larger yet. I want to try to keep it off this flower as much as I can. So I'm going to come down like right into here. Now I could come and come to the exposure and let's just make that a little darker. But you see how I can just affect that area just like that. And I'm pretty much staying off the flower and I like that. That's really nice. Now what if I wanted to add a, like this area here, what if I wanted to make it darker? Well, right now, if I draw another radio gradient out, and I can come here and click add and grab another radio gradient if I wanted to, but what if I wanted to adjust it with a different exposure setting? All I do is come back up here to create a new mask and do another radio gradient, and this time I'm just gonna put one over in here, and again, we can size it any size we want and maybe something like that. And now let me go ahead and darken this area up. See how I can just lightly darken that area. And now I'm gonna look for other areas that I want. I'm gonna go ahead and open up another, another create new mask and grab another radio gradient. And this area right down in here, I'm gonna drag out and come down into here. And let's make it wider like that. And I think that looks pretty good. And let me go ahead and adjust the exposure here. But you see how nice I can just really balance this out. Now I see this leaf right here. I think it's a little too bright. So let's go ahead and, 
you know, again, I could put it inside of here if I felt that was the right amount of exposure decrease, but it might not be. So I'm going to go ahead and click plus. No big deal, right? And then we'll go ahead and click on radial gradient. And now I'll put a radial gradient right in here. Dragging it to the shape that I want and we'll adjust its angle and I'll pull it in here and let's make it a little bit wider. Down into here, I'm going to stay away from my flower and I think somewhere right around in there. And I'll just take this exposure and just start to darken it up just a little bit just to take the emphasis off of that one. And by the way, we can shut any one of these masks off to see the before and after by clicking on the eye. So I'm on mask four here. So if I shut this eye off, you can see it's this one down in here and I'll turn it back on and watch that area gets a little darker. Okay, so we could check these all out and see if we're moving in the right direction. Say, yeah, it looks good. Let's check this one out before and after. And here's my linear, here's my before and here's my after. We could come back and click on any one of these and readjust if we need to. Okay, and let's look at this uh, leaf right here. We can see here is the before and here's the after. So it's just darkened up a little wee bit. And now I'll take a look and see what else needs uh, balanced out. So what I'm trying to do is just balance this out and draw the most emphasis on this flower. So let me go and add another one right here. So let's click on the plus radial gradient and I'll drag one out on here and adjust the angle of it, something like that. Let's make it a little bit longer. Adjust my angle again and just come down into here and let me go ahead and darken this up. See that I can just darken that up a little bit there. And so far, I think it's looking really nice. Now, you can come up here where it says masks, and you can shut all your masks off. Like, here's the before and here's the after. But you see how nicely there's before and there's after. But you see how nicely it's all starting to balance out. And as I said, this is quick and easy. It's really fast, too. It takes me time to explain it. But if you're doing this on your end, you'll say, man, this is really quick. So let's, uh, this leaf right here is a little bit too light. So let me add another one. Uh, radio gradient and let's drag one out in here let's re adjust the angle and let's make it a little bit longer and if you grab the center black circle you can take it and move the whole radio gradient around and let me just go ahead and pull the exposure back on that just a tiny wee bit and it, everything blends in nice with that graduation zone and remember you can uh, widen that graduation zone out by pulling this in like this then I'd have to make it a little bit bigger by dragging on this circle here and uh, again I think that's looking really good let me just right about there okay and now I want to come back to this one I think it's still a little bit too late so that was you could kind of tell where they are you can name these if you want to but that takes time but it's not a bad idea I know it's this one right here and whenever you hover over a mask you can see it where it is right so that's kind of nice too so let's come here click on here and now what I'll do is I'll just take this exposure and take it back just that's and if I go too much it's going to look not nice right so I don't want to go that much I just want to maybe go, maybe right about there. So let's take a look. Here is the before and here's the after. It's just a little bit darker. And I think that's looking good. Is there anything else I want to do? Um, right up here, it's a little bit light. So let me go ahead and add another one. Radio gradient. Drag one out right here. Move it into position like so. I think that's going to be good. Let's just darken that up a little bit. And it's just that quick and easy. So now I want to draw more emphasis to this flower. So I'm going to use another radial gradient, but I'll do something a little different this time. I'm going to click the plus, grab a radial gradient, and put it right around the flower like so. I don't want to lighten up the flower, but I want to darken everything around it. I'm going to make it... I'll change that graduation zone a little bit. And... Let's make it a little bit bigger like that. And what I'm going to do is come over to the mask here where it says radio gradient. Click the three dots and click invert. Now, if I hover over the center, you can see it's going to affect the outer portion. Okay, that's cool, right? So now I can take the overall exposure and just kind of pull it all in like so. 
I don't want to go too much here, but I just want to draw more emphasis into this flower here. But let's take a look at the overall. Here's the overall before. As you can see now, it's really out of balance, right? But after, what, how many? I use nine masks here. And believe me, you could do this within a, like about like five minutes. It's really quick. And now we can see here is the after. But you see how nicely that has balanced out. Then, of course, you can go back and retweak anything. And remember, you don't only have exposure. This is all I'm using because I'm just balancing out the image. And this is all, in my opinion, that it really needs. But I think this area up here still... Maybe it's a little too dark. So let's go back. And that was my first mask. And if I hover over mask one, yeah, you can see there's that area right there. So let me click on mask one. And I'm going to take the exposure to the right just a little bit. And I think like, oh, right, right there. Looks good. Now, here's a little tip for you for more accurate adjustments. If you don't want to drag the slider, if you're having trouble with your mouse getting it just where you want it, if you hover over this uh, slider here and you see how it's highlighted over here where it says uh, minus 59 if you uh, move your up arrow it'll jump 10 increments at a time see right now it's at 59 if i go up now it's at 49 or if i go down now it's back to 59 so it jumps 10 increments at a time if you hold your shift key down and I, if I go and click my down arrow, it'll jump 33 increments. See, now it goes from 59 to 92. I don't know why they come up with the number 33. At least on my Lightroom, that's the way it is. And I'm sure it's for everyone. And now if I hold shift and hit the up arrow, it goes back to minus 59. So that's a nice little tip if you're having trouble getting just the right amount of adjustment. Now remember, if you want to retweak anything, just hover over the mask and you'll see the area that will be affected. So that's nice. So you could really find the area. That's a really quick way to locate it. And also remember, you can use any adjustment that you want in here. Okay, you'll notice on this linear, you know, I adjusted exposure, but I also worked with texture and clarity. And of course, you have saturation, sharpness, noise anything that you want shadows and highlights pretty powerful adjustments but let's take a look now here's my overall before and here is my after but again this is really quick and a really simple way of getting great editing results right here in lightroom especially on images that are not too demanding then you would need Photoshop, but you don't even have to use all the fancy new masking tools. The linear gradient and the radial gradient will get the job done. And if you have a more complicated edit, that's when you could go ahead and use all those other like luminance range and color range tools in intersecting. And I have videos showing you where I do that. And that's really powerful too. Okay, when you're done with your local adjustments, just click this icon again, and now you'll be out of the local adjustments. I'm going to go back to basic and when it's all said and done, I may want to just open up the exposure a little bit more. So I'm just going to hover over the exposure and hit my up arrow. And remember, it'll jump 10 increments. That just makes it a little bit lighter and I like that. And if I wanted to finish it off with say like a vignette, I could come down to effects and let's just give it a little bit of a post crop vignette. I'm just going to take this amount slider drag it a little bit to the left, just a little tiny wee bit. Here's the before and here's the after, just, you know, to draw emphasis more into the center of the image and really onto the flower. But again, what I was trying to accomplish was making this flower just really pop out and make our eyes go towards it and also to balance out the image. And now if we want to see the overall before and after, just type your backslash key. There's the before. And here is the after. You know what? I'm seeing one thing here. This looks a little light right in this area right here. So this is going to be a bonus. I'm going to come back to my local adjustments, click this, and I'm going to create a new mask. This time, I'm not going to use a linear gradient or radial gradient. I'm going to use a brush tool. And my brush tool is set with flow at 100%, density 100%, feathering at 75%. And I'm going to turn my overlay on. And all, this area, I'm just going to paint a red mask on here like this. Around here, around here, up into here a little bit in here, down into here, and over here, just like that. Okay. And now let's come over to the adjustments. And I'm just going to take that exposure and just drag it down just a little wee bit. 
maybe right like that. Now let me shut that mask off. Let me shut off my overlay first. Here's before and here's the after. So I like that. Now I'm going to go ahead and click this local adjustment again and close that up. And now here's my overall before and here is my after. Well, there it is. Radial gradients and linear gradients, especially the radial gradients, they're marvelous for really balancing out an image, especially on an image that isn't that complicated. You can do it all right in Lightroom. Well, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial today. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. And if you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe. Click that bell notification icon. Then every time I upload a new tutorial, you'll be notified about it. I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me today in the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. I'll see you all right here next time. But until then, happy editing.